friends, welcome to Tarunayas. Today we will be discussing Delhi current affairs of 22nd of October 2022. So let's start with the first news of the day. The first news is about the annual international health conference which was held by the World Health Summit 2022 in Berlin and Germany. World Health Organization for the first time is co-organizing this summit. 2022 summit is aimed to strengthen the exchange, stimulate innovation in order to provide solution to the health challenges. It aimed to position health issue as a global issue in the spirit of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The global leaders they committed to donate 2.54 billion United States dollars for eradicating polio. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation they, they have taken the pledge to Global Polio Eradication Initiative. The Rotary International and countries such as United States, Germany and France, they have also pledged to eradicate polio. All right, now polio has not been completely eradicated because there are still cases of the wild polio that we see. There are cases of the, um, of the immune, immune resistant varieties that are being emerging newly. In fact, a case in the Israel was seen the resulting um, that resulted the polio resulted from the oral polio vaccine or the intravenous um, polio polio vaccine so polio vaccine induced cases are also being seen therefore the pledge taken taken at the world health summit becomes very international health summit becomes very important let's talk about the polio now basically polio which is um, called as poliomyelitis is a highly infectious disease and it is a viral disease. It is a viral disease. It enters the nervous system and it can cause paralysis in just few hours. Sometimes it can be fatal also and it can leave the person disabled. Symptoms may include fever, fatigue, headache, vomiting, stiffness of the neck, pain in the limbs. Because lymphatic system is the major system which is affected by the polio virus. Treatment is not known for polio, however, it can be prevented using the vaccine. Till the age of 5 years, the oral polio vaccines are given to the child. Polio has three known stains, strains, that is 1, 2, 3, each with a slight difference in the structure. Immunity to one type does not guarantee immunity to the others. So let's look at these type 1, 2, 3 wild polio virus. Type 1 remains in circulation and it is endemic to the region of Pakistan and Afghanistan. Some of the regions in these countries are not accessible by the world health workers. Therefore, the cases of the wild polio virus 1 remains unchecked in these countries. Type 2 wild polio virus was declared eradicated in the years 2015 and type 3 wild, uh, wild polio virus was declared eradicated in the year 2019. There is a common route by which the polio virus spread, spread which is fecal oral route and it can also spread through the contaminated water or food. The virus multiplies in the host intestine. The, suscept the most susceptible group to the virus are the children under the age of 5 years. But all unvaccinated people can also contract the disease. The second news of the day is about the India Post Payment Bank and Reserve Bank Innovation Hub, they have collaborated for the innovations in the financial products and services. Now, what is the Reserve Bank Innovation Hub? Basically, it is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Reserve Bank of India. It was set up to promote and facilitate an environment that accelerates the innovation across the financial sector. It will provide the platform to anchor a shared vision among all the financial ecosystem stakeholders and it will also aid them in graft, crafting forward-looking innovation strategies that will address the most pressing issues in the Indian financial sector. The organization basically serves as the focal point to position India as a global innovation hub to provide network of the financial services, innovation hub, policy makers, technologists, academics and investors community. The network will also be empowered to ideate, means to give idea, to incubate, 
new capabilities enable the success to sustainable secure and frictionless financial services over a billion indians the third news of the day is about hyderabad the city of hyderabad has won the world green city awards 2002 and the living green for economic recovery and inclusive growth award at international association of horticulture producers world green city awards 2002 which was uh, which was held in jeju island south korea now the awards they were um, instituted by the international association of horticulture producers in order to recognize the role of city authorities to in promoting and supporting the greater greater inclusion of nature and plants in the urban environments now why the city of hyderabad has won this award the first point is that the program of the hyderabad uh, the the government of telangana which is telangana ku harita haram that means greening the city which aimed at increasing the tree cover in the city by 33% which is also the national goal according to the national forest policy of 1988 the city was in, recognized for implementing various initiatives that rely on nature and plants to create the better uh, better urban environment these programs they help fulfill the local aspiration of the people for improved environmental social and economic resilience basically the global recognition to the plants uh, the awards they give the global recognition to the plants in providing solution for the common city problems and create an enabling environment to shape and nurture a strategic shift in city governance and planning the fourth news of the day is about japanese embassy has filled an application seeking a gi tag for nihon shu what is this nihonshu basically nihonshu in japan is a alcoholic beverage that is made by fermenting the rice and it is drink it is taken by the pe- Jap- uh, people of japan as a, as an integral part of their culture on various o- on special occasions the main ingredients that are needed is rice kojikin and water no sense they have filed for the gi tag we will try to understand what this we will try to understand what this gi tag is basically gi tags they are used as an indication to identify the goods that have special characteristic and they originate from a definite geographical territory that is the reason why geographical indication tag the act of 1999 which is geographical indication of goods registration and protection act of 1999 seeks to provide the registration and better protection of the um, geographical indications relating to the goods in india it is valid for the year t- uh, it is valid for 10 years and it is given in the field of agriculture natural or manufactured products it is governed and directed by the wto agreements on trade related aspects of the prop- intellectual property rights that is wto trips and it was also decided and stated under article 1 and 10 of the paris convention that the protection of industrial property and geographical indications they are elements of the intellectual property the fifth news of the day is about the great indian bustard recently the great indian bustard they are sited in the deep pakistan that is cholas uh, cholistan region which are which raised the speculation that they might have flown there from the desert national park which hosts the largest population of great indian bustard in india it is the state bird of rajasthan let's talk about the great indian bustard it is the state bird of rajasthan it accounts for 95% of the population It is the largest bird and it is critically endangered in the IUCN red list. It is the flagship species of the grassland which and represents its health and ecology. This is how the great indian bustard uh, looks like. And this is the desert national park in Rajasthan. However, Rajasthan is not the only state to host great um, great indian bustard. though the largest population is present in the dnp however the state of andhra and madhya pradesh and certain part of gujarat also host some population of the few individuals of great indian bustard it is mostly confined to rajasthan and gujarat however the small population occur in maharashtra karnataka and andhra pradesh 
the bird is under constant threat due to the first point is the hunting the second point is the habitat destruction and the third point is the electro caution electro caution means the electro caution with the transmission lines Great Indian Bustard, they are protected under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1973, Schedule 1. They are protected in the, under the Appendix 1 of the sites. Now, this site, it protects the species um, at the trans transnational level. Appendix 1 of the CMS, which is Convention for Migratory Species. Let's talk about the sixth news of the day, which is about the successful test fired of the indigenously developed and designed, indigenously developed and designed Agni Prime, which is a medium range ballistic missile from the Odisha coast, designed and developed by Defense Research and Development Organization. The key points are that Agni Prime is a two stage canisterized solid propellant ballist ballistic missile with dual redundant navigation and guidance system. It is a surface-to-surface -surface ballistic missile with a range of 1,000 km to 2,000 km. Agni-P is a new generation advanced variant of the Agni class, which was developed under the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program started under the leadership of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam in the year 19, in, in 1980s. Agni Prime is also known as Agni P, which is a medium range ballistic missile developed by Defense Research and Development Organization as a successor to Agni 1 and Agni 2 missiles. It comes with the new composites, propulsion system, control mechanics, innovative guidance, besides the latest navigation system. It is the sixth missile in the Agni series of the ballistic missile. Now, what are these Agni missiles? Basically, Agni missiles are the mainstay of the India's nuclear launch capability, which also includes the Prithvi, which is a short-range ballistic missile, and also the submarine-launched ballistic missile and fighter aircrafts. Agni missiles, they are long-range nuclear weapon, which are capable of surface to which are capable surface-to-surface -surface ballistic missile. The first missile of the Agni series, that is Agni-1, it was developed under the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program and it was tested in the year 1989. So you can have a look at, um, at the Agni series. All right. So this is Prahar. This is Brahmos. This is... Um, it, is uh, it is a series of the tactical, medium and long-range weapons that India has developed. Starting with the Agni series, Agni 1, this is Nirbhaya, Agni 2, Agni 3, Agni 4 and Agni 5 and we also have Agni P that we just discussed which is the successor of Agni 1 and Agni 2. Alright, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching Tarunayas. Have a nice day.